It's a cheese that is synonymous with pizza and gooey strands of cheesy deliciousness. It can trace its roots back to the Romans and production was temporarily stopped by the Nazis in World War II. Let's talk about the history of mozzarella. Hey there, cheese historians! I'm Julia, and this is Cheese History, a channel all about the origins, history, and impact of cheese. In this video, we are looking at the origins and history of everyone's favorite pizza cheese, mozzarella. Any cheese worth its salt has a legend surrounding its accidental origins, and mozzarella is no different. Our tale begins in Naples in Italy somewhere in the 15th century. The workers at a cheese factory are making cheese. One of them somehow manages to drop some fresh curds into a bucket of hot water. There is a frantic effort to retrieve the curds, and they are eventually fished out of the hot water. Alas, they are now a melted, gooey mess that begins to slide off the stirring spoon, stretching into a long strand of cheese. It's probably not very likely that this story is true. The Romans were making what sounds a lot like mozzarella. Roman author Columula describes the process for hand-pressed cheese. He says, When the milk is slightly congealed in the pail and still warm, it is broken up and hot water is poured over it, and then it is either shaped by hand or else pressed into boxwood moulds. The addition of hot water is an important step here, if this is indeed something like mozzarella, as heating the curds makes them pliable enough to stretch. It looks like stretched curd cheeses have ancient origins. Cheesemonger Ned Palmer speculates that the Dacians from modern Romania might have brought their Brinza Burdov, Ballos cheese, a rural sheep's milk cheese still made in the mountains of Transylvania and hung in a sheep or goatskin bag to mature. Brinza is a pasta filata or stretched curd cheese where the curd is set into a firm rubbery texture and pulled and stretched a bit like making noodles or toffee. It's possible that the Romans learnt the pasta filata method after their invasion of Dacia, resulting ultimately in one of the most famous Italian cheeses, mozzarella. It looks like the process for making a cheese like mozzarella can trace its roots back at least to the conquests of the Roman Empire. It's worth pausing for a moment to look at why mozzarella stretches in the way that it does. Mozzarella is a pasta filata or pulled curd cheese because a vital step in the process is to pull or stretch the curds. But you can't just heat any cheese curds and have them stretch. They need special conditions. In particular, they need the right pH. pH is a means of measuring either how acidic or alkaline a substance is. It's a scale between 1 and 14. The lower the number, the more acidic a substance is. The higher the number, the more alkaline. 7 is neutral. 1 to 6.9 are varying levels of acidity, and 7.1 to 14 are alkaline. Water has a pH of 7, lemon juice is 2.2, tomatoes are around 4.5, baking soda 8.3, bleach 13.5. When speaking about the pH of cheese, we're mainly looking at the acidic end of the pH scale. Milk usually has a pH of around 6.8 to 6.6, .6, so it's not very acidic. When the lactic bacteria start to consume the milk sugar or lactose in milk, they produce lactic acid, which makes milk more acidic. For cheese curds to stretch, they need to have a pH between 5.8 and 4.8, but between 5.3 and 5.2 is best. The curds also have to be heated. For mozzarella, this is usually done by dipping the curds in hot water or whey. You can also heat them in the microwave, which is quite a simple sort of home cheese maker method of doing it. Giannaclis Caldwell has this to say about how mozzarella stretches. Stretch requires an intact network of proteins in the cheese. Cheese proteins in properly made mozzarella have the ability to slide past each other, then reform, keeping the strand from breaking and allowing you to stretch it into new shapes. Luckily, you don't need to know the exact pH of cheese curds in order to make a cheese like mozzarella. Cheese makers are very skilled and attuned to the ingredients they are working with, milk and curds. 
they would have been able to detect changes in the acidity of the cheese curds by its smell, taste, or even feel. And failing that, they could do what many home cheese makers do today and put a little bit of curd in some hot water to see if it'll stretch. It works. While the Romans may have had one essential ingredient for making mozzarella, the stretch curd process, they were still lacking an important ingredient, water buffalo milk. Traditional Italian mozzarella is made from water buffalo milk and is known today as mozzarella di bufala. Water buffaloes are not indigenous to Italy, but originate in India and Southeast Asia. There is no real agreement on when they arrived in Italy, with options ranging from the Greek and Roman times when they may have been draft animals, to the 7th to 10th centuries AD. David Gibbon writes that, Used as draft animals in Greek and Roman times, water buffalo may have been brought in greater numbers to Sicily towards the end of the first millennium CE by Saracen conquerors from North Africa. Scant references exist from the late Middle Ages through the Renaissance. In the 10th and 11th centuries, the so-called impauladamento swamping of these areas, Campania in southern Italy, invited farmers to employ water buffalo. Just as this magnificent animal is particularly suited to the soggy, fertile fields of these floodplains, so its milk, which is higher in protein, fat and calcium than cows, is optimal for making mozzarella-type cheeses. The name mozzarella comes from the word mozzare, meaning to separate, in the dialect of the Campania region of Italy. Mozzare is said to describe the process of stretching the curds. David Gibbons describes the earliest reference to the cheese that will become known as mozzarella. In the 12th century, the monks of San Lorenzo in Capua, near Caserta, offered rations of buffalo mozzarella to pilgrims. As monasteries were one of the main places where cheese was made during the Middle Ages, from the 5th to 15th centuries, it's not too surprising to find early mozzarella associated with a monastery. It wasn't yet called mozzarella at this time, though. The earliest documented reference to the name mozzarella is from 1570 in Bartolomeo Scappi's Opera di Bartolomeo Scappi, work of Bartolomeo Scappi. Scappi was a chef to several popes in Italy during the Renaissance period, which was from the 14th to 17th centuries. His work, Opera, is a collection of recipes, descriptions of banquets he has prepared, and information about food and cooking. In his instructions for what to include in a sideboard at a formal meal, Scuppi has a list of cheeses. March cheese, Florentine ravioli, Romagnola cheese, Roman cheese, Ligurian cheese, Mallorcan cheese, fresh and dry Cassio Cavallo, March provatura, and other sorts of cheese. In spring, summer and fall, milk curds, cream tops, fresh butter, used milk curd cheese, fresh mozzarella, Milk snow. Sometime before 1570, mozzarella became mozzarella. It's also interesting that Scappi calls it fresh mozzarella, suggesting that there could well have been some kind of aged mozzarella. The fresh mozzarella is named alongside other dairy products that sound like they are also quite perishable, like fresh butter and milk curds. So the mozzarella of 1570 may well have been very similar to what is available today. For most of its history, mozzarella was a local cheese, not well known outside parts of southern Italy. This is not too surprising, as it is a fresh cheese that needs to be eaten within a few days of being made. It could have been dried and aged, which would have allowed it to be shipped. There are many Italian stretch curd cheeses that are aged, but they are all distinct types of cheese. The production and consumption of mozzarella was kind of limited to the Campania region until the second half of the 19th century. The various Italian nation-states were unified into the nation of Italy about the same time, allowing mozzarella to gain popularity throughout Italy. It began to spread internationally with the increase of migration of Italians in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, particularly to America, but even there it remained a speciality of Italian communities until after the Second World War. World War II saw a change in the production of mozzarella in Italy. Up to this point, it had been made from buffalo milk. 
Despite being allies of the Italians, the Nazis destroyed the herds of water buffalo in southern Italy as they retreated from the advancing allies. Unable to use the traditional milk, mozzarella producers began using cow's milk instead. After the war, migrants from Italy to the United States brought this cow's milk mozzarella with them. Italy did manage to bring in water buffalo from India and recreated its herds, returning to their traditional way of making the stretch cheese. In the States, however, it's cow's milk mozzarella that really took off. Mozzarella is perhaps best known as the cheese you find on pizza. The most famous of all the mozzarella pizzas is the Margarita pizza, with its simple combination of tomatoes, basil and mozzarella. The Margarita pizza also has its own legend. National law asserts that the Italian king Umberto I travelled to Naples with his queen Margarita of Savoy in 1889 and sought out a regional dish. To honour the royal visit, the pizza maker Raffaele Esposito served the couple an assortment of pizzas, including one topped with green basil, white mozzarella, and red tomatoes, which echoed the newly unified country's tricolor flag. This pizza, which particularly delighted the Queen, was named Margarita in the Queen's honor, and is considered the archetype of the contemporary pizza. Whether or not this story is true, it shows us the place that mozzarella has in the shaping of Italian national identity as one of the three ingredients on a pizza created to represent the Italian national flag, soon after the country was united. Pizza travelled to America with Italian migrants in the 19th century just as mozzarella did, and developed into one of the most popular fast foods in the world today. Just as mozzarella helped to shape the classic margarita pizza, so pizza and its rise to international fame has shaped mozzarella. There is one other type of mozzarella worth mentioning, and that is the blocks of firm mozzarella that are really common in supermarkets, at least they are here in New Zealand. They are pretty much designed to be graters. My understanding, and any Americans can correct me if I'm wrong on this, is that this sort of mozzarella is called pizza cheese in the US, because it has moved a long way from the definition of mozzarella. I've also read that pizza cheese can contain a lot of other different types of cheeses as well as mozzarella, so pizza cheese is not pure mozzarella. With the explosion in popularity of pizza after the Second World War, there was a need for ever-increasing quantities of mozzarella. The problem that ends up facing all mass-produced cheeses is how to keep the costs as low as possible and production as high as possible. The mozzarella that is formed into the commercially produced blocks has a much lower moisture content than traditionally made mozzarella, which is shaped into balls during stretching. The lower moisture content means that it can be easily grated and it lasts longer. Fresh mozzarella balls have to be stored in liquid, usually water, whey, or maybe a low salt brine to stop them drying out, and then they last about a week. So if you want the best mozzarella experience, Get the fresh stuff, or better yet, make it yourself. Mozzarella can be a simple cheese to make, but home cheese makers are kind of divided on whether it's a beginner's cheese or not. So let me know in the comments if you're a cheese maker whether you think mozzarella is a beginner's cheese or a more advanced one. Because mozzarella can be eaten straight after making it, it's possible to use lemon juice, vinegar, or citric acid to make the milk acidic enough to stretch. In fact, many home cheesemakers start with mozzarella made in this way. It was the first cheese I ever made, and the cheese that started my obsession with cheesemaking. I wanted to make mozzarella for pizza, and it's quite expensive to buy fresh balls of mozzarella in New Zealand, particularly those made with buffalo milk, because they have to be imported from Italy, which is a long way from New Zealand, pretty much on the other side of the world. Now, I had heard that it was possible to make cheese at home, but really had no idea how. So I did what any respectable person of my generation does, and I googled how to make mozzarella. I found the many and excellent cheesemaking tutorials by Gavin Weber, and a cheese making kit, and the rest is basically history. Thanks Gavin, you are as ever my inspiration and the reason for my obsession with cheese. If you are thinking that cheese making is something you would like to try out, go and check out Gavin's channel. I cannot recommend it enough. He is a great cheese maker and a lovely human being. I will link his quick mozzarella video in the description. 
I hope you enjoyed learning about the history of mozzarella. If you did, please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on more cheese history. You can also follow me on Instagram if you'd like to see pictures of the cheeses I make or other cheese history related content. If you'd like to support what I do here at Cheese History, you can do so over on Patreon, but don't feel any pressure in that regard. I'm just really pleased that you're here and you've made it this far through this video on mozzarella. Until next time, cheese historians, may your mozzarella always stretch. Thank you.